Hello, hello, and welcome back. Town here with a continuation of our Slice and Dice run that we've got going on right now. And wow, we are coming off of quite the rotten fight. Uh, did not expect to uh, have a one hour boss fight during any of these series and playthroughs, but uh, yeah, that felt like a final boss, but we're actually only a little over halfway through this run. Uh, let's see where we go from here. I am quite concerned about the next fight because I think all but one of our characters died, which means most of them are at low health, which can be a problem. Uh, let's see where we left off, uh, evaluate our current position, the fight we are up against, and see if we can pull this out. By the way, if you guys would like to support this channel and my other related projects, you can do so over at patreon.com slash tonehack, so feel free to check that out. Okay, these bandits look like they shouldn't be too hard to get rid of. Well, except it's going to be hard to actually hit other things to make them flee. We can get kill the gnolls fast and get overkill in the illusions. That would be an easy way to do something. Or we could damage one bandit a lot. Basically, damage one bandit by two, then they will be in the back line. I guess three would be the best. They'd be in the back line, and everyone else would be up front, because all these other enemies are at low health. Even though having a lot of enemies that can spread out a lot of damage when most of our heroes are weak is probably what we wanted to avoid, I feel like this is a set of enemies that we could probably work with decently here with our squad. Also, the Trapper insta-kill stuff. We can't actually make the bandits flee. Unless I boost something, probably. Until at least turn two with the Wanderer. This side would be a good early grab here, though, just to kill these two illusions. Uh, let's see what item we have here. Immune to damage during your turn. That could be really strong with some heroes. None that we have currently really take damage on our turn. Ooh, that is actually incredible with Viscera. That is a good combo. That's a good reason to take that. Is Viscera does damage to us equal to the amount of damage it does. It has pain on it. Ink bottles replace blank sides with shield one cantrip. That's the kind of um, low floor, low ceiling um, item. Well, it has a... Yeah, it has like a high floor actually. A uh, medium floor? This is always good is what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, and those are what you usually want to take in this game and not not take a risk to get something that's going to be potentially do give you no value. Like getting random items. Like you would take this over random item pretty much all the time in our situation, especially with the right side blank. Um, but I think Thimble is going to be really good here. Especially if we combine it with Viscera. Kind of want to throw that on like Trapper. Maybe Wanderer usually, but not on this fight where this is actually really strong for his turn. That growth shield has been clutch a few times, um, especially in the last fight that we had against the Rotten. Like that actually saved us. It saved us a few times. It's for a side that I don't really care about normally. 
Um, it's been very clutch a few times in this run, I think. They're also the only one with high health right now to take advantage of Viscera. I'm gonna roll with this for now. I think we also don't care about the flag. Oh, someone had noted. Let's try this. Yeah, that was a good idea. Shout out to the, uh, the comments last time. Sorry, I don't remember who um, in particular mentioned it. But you can put the flag on someone and then Viscera, which is the only one we have, or something that covers up the middle side to overwrite this, and you get the plus three max hit points, but don't have the flag ability. So that's a really cool use for that. Now, unfortunately, we probably just want to use Viscera with the, the thimble now. That's actually a really good combo in particular, though, because you get a lot of health to mess with Viscera with, and then you have the Enchanter. With the Enchanter, that's probably better than the Thimble in general for now, but we need to use the Enchanter to try and heal people, so we'll still rock this for now. Uh, but that's a really cool combo. Um, who do we put the Anchor on? Probably the Monk. Or I put on the Enchanter again because we really don't want her to lose more health. Uh, I think we'll be good with this. Okay, so this kills a Null. I like that. We roll for the spike here. We take the three mana, that's actually huge. I think we will more or less be killing both illusions no matter what this turn. If I can assume this guy rolls damage and then I get at least the flick here. So I'm not going to worry about the cleanse for that purpose. And I think I really want the self lock here. Hmm. Wander is in trouble. Well, we're going to be able to remove damage from some people, so we'll be able to make this work. I think I'm going to greed for one of these two sides. And if I end up on this one up, we're fine as well. And I'm going to reroll the monk and try to get a, a self heal or the self block. That's perfect. Uh, I think we just take this and don't greed there, and I will reroll with the monk again. Perfect. Okay. So, how do we actually want to distribute all of this? We either block one of the top two guys here. We're going to kill both illusions. So the Wanderer is taking one less damage. And I will leave this... Well, we're not really going to hurt the bandits anyway. So I think we block... Let the Wanderer get four block from procking this four times. The monk afford to block for the enchanter, who's currently taking six damage, and the monk is taking three. They'll have five block total, which means they'll be taking. Well, that's counting two of this already. So they're taking five right now, right? We'll have to kill this null, I think. And they probably can. Yep. Yep, 
Get rid of those guys. I can actually flick burst this knoll. Oh no, that's not how this works, is it? Well, I'll flick them regardless. I get more damage if I flick a bandit and then burst the null. It works out the same, so do this. Oh, they're immune to that. Duh. Okay, hang on. We'll just run it like this for now. I'll probably make one of these bandits flee next turn with the null, depending on how our rolls go. It's two or more, right? So the bursting the null and then playing this will make them flee. I'll have to do more damage to a bandit though to get the null up front. Should be fine. I'll have to do two damage to one of these guys. Um, so we're gonna make these two flee and then we just have to worry about the yellow damage. Which I'll let the monk take on. No, that'll kill him. I can give this guy three block, which barely saves him. Where we can roll here. The heal would be a lot better. I think we roll here. This is the worst out of these three sides. This is okay. Do I get lethal with this? Burst null, hit null with this. These two guys leave. And then I just need to do one, two, three damage to you. Okay, I think we have lethal. I'm not even gonna do the math. Not even gonna do the math. Oh, you're not overkilled by two. Guess I should have done the math. All right, well, let's play that differently then. Kill the null. I can just kill them with this straight up, and I have to deal with these attacks. They're a bit much. Yeah, I kept screwing up my math with the null's armor. They take minus one damage from all sources. So we can actually just kill the Null then. Then I can kill one of these guys. Even though I have to stagger the damage, I have enough mana to do it. So we, we're going to save the Monk here and kill the guy that's attacking 
the Wanderer. The monk gets extra healing from this, and he won't be poisoned, and the poison is kind of nasty. Put them down to four for insta-kill. And we run it like that. One bandit should be pretty straightforward to take out, I hope. This kills if I can get one mana. I'll take that. Where's the one mana? Pretty straightforward fight. <clears throat> okay, this is the kind of fight where Barricade is pretty brutal, I think. Two very tanky enemies, so we cannot target any of them. We have to split our damage between them while they remain at full strength as far as their attacks are concerned. Uh, let's see what our new hero options are. The Dancer. They have some 1 damage cantrips, 3 damage attack, and a 1 damage to all enemies rampage can be reused if lethal, and pain, they take 1 damage. 1 damage to all enemies is really good um, for us, I think. The Mimic. So the Dancer was existed before. I think they were a little different. I think this was a another cantrip. I'm not sure what they had here. Now the Mimic is brand new to me. They have a 1 damage vulnerable side. Target hero can use their dice again. Single use plus 1 mana. Shield 3 duplicate. So if they roll this then we can turn any of our allies dice into a shield instead of whatever they roll. Shield 2 Copycat copies the keywords from the last used dice face this turn. I wonder if that works with the era, how that interacts. Let's cleanse. The only hero that's tier 3 so far is Wanderer, so none of these are going to be permanent. Repel. There's some, that's a cool class. What's their spell do? My top side is a copy of the top hero's top side, similar for my bottom side. Oh! That's interesting. So I thought it was interesting that they had this hero's thing. This is a cool class. I like this guy a lot. This guy feels pretty strong, honestly. I wonder what their right side normally is. I wonder if they'll populate here if I don't take them. Um, but Dancer is also very good for us. The one damage cantrip's a little awkward because they'll be pushing guys to the back on the first turn, like guys we might want to target. Being able to do one damage to all enemies. Um, this rampage is really strong. I can throw the thimble on them so they don't even take the pain damage. This is really good AoE. 
on a lot of fights where there's a lot of guys, you can stagger their health so that you can just hit ra this rampage side like four times and kill them all. And the one thing I'm considering is that this could be a little awkward with the shimmering pip. Like I actually have to remove that from people. does mean that we can finish off pretty well once we do remove that, even if they end up in the back line. The reroll sides are really nice just for getting more value out of your other characters too. This is a tough choice. What do I lose if I take the Mimic? Oops. I'm leaning towards the Mimic here. Especially because the Trapper is giving us a lot of value with this. Well, I guess I'm not putting this stuff on the Mimic anymore, which is what I was going to do. He can copy like the trapper side or let them use it twice i mean there's some cool stuff going on here who do i give like these items to now Troll has cleave, this guy has an all attack, so I'll probably throw the anchor on the mimic. So they can get some block first turn. I don't think I threw this on anyone still. I think this guy still takes this combo. Go ahead and throw plus healing on the Mimic as well, since they're most likely to get hit during this run. They're, they're a little squishy too. So we'll have to keep in mind our upgrades when we get Trapper and Jester here, or uh, these two guys upgraded. The current Mimic sides aren't that great, but once we get some tier threes in there, they could be potentially very strong. And we're offered a challenge. Uh, this can be pretty good, but there's no way I want to take another spiker with our current curses here. I think this fight's going to be bad enough, potentially. Spiky 2. I don't think we want this. Well, if I can do a lot of... Ugh, the troll regens too, which makes... <laughs> Which makes it really annoying to have to stagger my attacks. That means they're going to heal more throughout the fight, since I can't burst them down. Um, this is good if I can use it all on the troll. You know what I want though, is this thing to just put stack on the spiker right now. It's the highest value, so I may as well reroll that. Um, we got vulnerable here as well which would be pretty strong against the troll with this, but it's gonna be hard to hit them with that. I think we re-roll here for another Vulnerable or the Viscera. Actually, does... Hmm. I was wondering if this would insta-kill with this, but they're obviously not gonna roll both of those. Um, okay, I'm gonna re-roll everything here. This worked out okay. Hmm. 
So they don't even take spike damage, which is nice here. Oh, I could have forced the Jesser to, to block for 3 2. I'll take this though. That's fine. Am I supposed to flick at some point? Probably. <clears throat> I think I should use that flick. Get the spiker down to four for Trapper insta kill. Like so. I think I just take this again. I'll just reroll the jester since I can just give them this afterwards. I have to say, we might be blocking a lot if I don't get good rolls here. Okay, so we kill the spiker, right? Vulnerable is pretty strong. I like that. If I can get the spike, we'll be in business. I'm gonna reroll this. We might be able to get the double boost. I have three rerolls and no one's dying, so I have some flexibility here. Double vulnerable, so I do one damage, two damage, and further attacks do more. Oh, I forgot this gets key uh, keywords. I haven't been playing around that. I have to keep that in mind. Whoa, it says cantrip, so I can roll this and it'll play shield two copycat. That's cool. I was thinking about how that doesn't really help with cantrip, but it actually does. Sure. Okay, I think we probably have lethal here. This is a pretty insane turn, actually. Yeah, these are doing four damage a piece. He's just gonna die to my flick. Okay, ooh, snipers are brutal with shimmering, huh? This is the kind of fight where the dancer wouldn't have been, wouldn't even have been very good in. Uh, let's see, broadsword or boots of speed. Plus one reroll. Replace the left side with dodge all enemy attacks and effects. Plus one reroll is really good. Replacing the left side is kind of bad though. I could see giving that to like the Wanderer. We haven't actually used this yet. 
Although I think it's very, um, did I use this? No, we, we've wanted to use this a few times, but it hasn't come up. That broadsword doesn't look very good on a lot of tier three heroes. It would be good on like the twins. Plus one reroll is really freaking strong. I think this is one where swinging on the Wanderer looks good. Just because our enemies don't have strong attacks for the inflict pain in this fight in particular. Um, do I leave Viscera and Thimble on you? I think I do. Self-shield. Snipers have eliminate. Target must have the least hit points. Makes me think I should throw that on the Jester for now. It actually goes down in order and tallies the damage. So sometimes this eliminate can go to someone else if they're taking damage. Like if the snake attacked Trapper for two damage, the sniper would um, aim for them first. That three rerolls is going to be really good. Especially because I need Jester to hit 3 mana often, and that helps them do that by quite a bit. In fact, let me look at my probability tables. On their die, which has a cantrip on it, so it's a 1 in 5 chance to hit that, we go from 49 to 59% chance to get that one face if we want it. From 3 to 4 rerolls. Or three to four rolls. I think we rock it like this. This can probably go to someone else. Nah, I like it on the Enchanter because it's still hard to heal her. Thorn was the only one to play Eliminate. They have a level 4 Eliminate. Interesting. Okay, so that kills a Sniper, or that will kill anything pretty easily for us. Um, hmm. Boost is very good. Wow, the Mimic's uh, keyword side, copycat side, could steal Boost here, which would be really strong on that too. Dodging this turn actually is not bad. Means I could avoid this poison. I might take that. I have four rerolls right now, so I have a I have great odds to get sides I need. Dude, spiky five. Yeah, because I don't even know what I would do with the other wanderer sides. They kind of like they they shine like a few turns in when these are doing a lot of damage. I think this thing's a little awkward. I mean, we probably kill the thorns with like flick. If I pop snake, snake with this, then I have the snipers available. But I have to do magic damage to them. I want to take your dodge here. The first turns, you, you take the most damage because the most enemies are around. So being able to dodge a lot of that damage um, helps. But we do have to do something about the mimic here. 
I mean, I can I probably kill the thorn and the sniper this turn pretty easily. And then you're only taking one damage with poison. Okay. Um, this lets burst like insta kill a sniper or something. I don't think I'm gonna have enough damage to get a sniper out front though. Oh wait, they're gonna stay in the back row even when someone else takes damage. They don't, because I don't think Barricade's gonna put them behind back lines. All right, where are we rolling this? This is okay. Act, I think we do either want that or the boost side. I'll take the mana, why not? Because I think you're fine. You're going to be fine, probably. Yeah. So. I have two rerolls left. Mm, this ain't going well so far. I already have the one mana to kill a thorn and the sniper, so our plan is fine here. I'm going to reroll both of these. I really wanted to make something vulnerable this turn. Does that change our math at all? It would if I could hit a sniper with this and like flick, but we can't. We're doing this. Probably block you. Oh, you're immune to spell damage. I forgot about that. Hold up. Well, I guess we're not killing you this turn. That does change things a bit. value out of that, huh? I'm gonna flick this snake while I'm at it. As well, so I can do some damage to them and also have flick next turn to hopefully flick a sniper or something. Boost. Mm, boost ain't really great here. Man, having three rerolls is is really freaking strong. I'm glad I took those boots. This game feels like way easier with that third reroll. <laughs> like I reroll once and get like a bad set of rolls and I'm like not sweating it. <laughs> it's okay, I got two chances left. Um, this isn't very good in this situation where I don't want to hit the thorn and I, I can basically only do one damage unless I hit things with Flick. Uh, this is kind of bad for the same reason. Maybe. This is okay. Maybe? I guess the Jester wants that pretty badly. Maybe I take that just to keep the Jester alive. Okay, well this take this will save the jester. Now I'm tempted to re-roll this. Uh 
Are we killing the freaking thorn this turn? It doesn't look like it. This kills the snake with a burst. Can the wanderer tank 10 damage if I wanted them to kill the thorn with this? I can block for three. I guess I can. Either I mimic this onto this. Oh, I can't do it like that though. If I want to play that before this, because then this will become the shield as well. How much shield could I get out of playing this before I have to attack the thorn? Attack this snake once and then the thorn's the only thing out front. Put up one shield, four shield. Nine health. Taking ten damage. Five total. I guess that works. I don't think it's worth re-rolling. Let's, let's take the kills. Oh wait, what about the jester then? They just die? health, 10 damage. If I block you once, you only take 7. You still live. I guess that's how we play this. block you. That's right. Ugh. Of course. <laughs> of course. If I play this again, you die. If I block you with this... Wow! This thorn is crazy with barricade. I think what I actually have to do... Is just let this thorn do a ton of damage to me. Oh, the trapper doesn't take damage, at least. On their turn, I forgot about that. I was wondering if this would give me all four uses once I copycatted. It looks like not. Um, I could kill something. I probably should. I should at least use flick on something, right? I'll take the two damage you enchanter though. Save this mana and see what we roll next turn. The flick in that situation was very good for just removing their shimmering health pip. Okay. Um, this is actually pretty good just getting one mana here. Um, this could be very good this fight. Go ahead and take that. 
I mean, that just kills two snipers right away if I flick this one as well. In fact, if I could get five mana for flick, burst, burst, this kills everyone. Which means I will roll for three mana on you. I think I re-roll this. This boost is very good. I'm just gonna take that. from like barely killing to maybe not even being able to kill at all with like the rolls we were getting to like having like complete overkill here. I don't even know how I want to play this out anymore. Um... I can't even use like my three best abilities there. Tarantus time. I'm afraid to start this boss fight after how long the last one took. Um, but let's give it a go. What does Tarantus look like now? Uh, devour, kill the topmost enemy. So that's, yeah, that's how they always worked. When you remove this pip, the top guy dies. I think they have more health now. Three damage, poison, weaken. Summon three, sp oh my gosh. This can ruin us. 12 damage attack. What do we get here? Roulette. 2 damage cantrip. 7 damage sticky mandatory death. Two of these keywords are new for me. So sticky cannot be rerolled. Mandatory must be used. Okay, so basically if you roll this side, you do 7 damage and die. Does Thimble prevent that? Immune to damage during your turn. I don't think it does. This says you die, not you take damage. Whoa! I can put the boots of speed on this guy, though. Because this is supposed to be a downside, I think. To make it harder to reroll. They're playing roulette. I wonder what their right side normally is. So those boots of speed go on here. Which is good because I want my Wanderer's left side to let the Tarantus do 12 damage to themselves with pain. They have a 2 damage cleave, which is pretty good for the backline stuff. They do just a lot of damage in general. I like that a lot. What about the Warlock? Blaze does 13 damage. This is a really good ability. That's a spell, so it ignores your shimmering pip. Plus two manage, bloodlust, bonus equal to the number of damaged enemies. Hmm. Blaze feels really good. I like both of these a lot. Like, we've been looking for spells that can hit backlines because of the barricade and the shimmering. This pretty much just ignores. <laughs> like, you just kill them before they even get pushed to the backline in most instances, which is really nice. It does require six mana. And they have to generate four... Honestly, these two pair really well together. 
Um, Bloodlust works really well with the barricade thing because we, we're forced to spread out our damage. So this will often... There will be multiple damage enemies most of the time. These are both really, really good. I think I'm taking the roulette here for two reasons. A, it's a new character that I haven't seen before. The Wanderer or the uh, other dude looked pretty similar to what they were before. Um, but this Boots of Speed synergy is hard to ignore. And we're gonna want this parked on one of our heroes. So this looks like a really strong effect. So I think we're gonna do it just for that. Where does this stuff go then? I think Viscera Thimble is not doing anything this turn, unless I want to put it on the Wanderer. It's probably pretty good, just do big chunk damage to the, the main boss when we can. That thing was okay against spiders. Oh, I didn't consider the Mimic. So if I upgraded my blue, then they would have had a four damage or four mana pain side on the bottom, which would have been kind of cool. A lot of the blues are going to have like cool mana sides on the bottom though, so I'm not too concerned about that. I think this roulette's going to be a lot of fun and it's hard to ignore the boots of speed here. I'll rock something like this. Uh, I think we will hold this off till next session though. Um, I'm afraid of how long this fight could take. This one's getting long already. I don't want to do another 90 minute <laughs> video. Um, so let's leave this here. Um, we survived that first fight. I was the most concerned about that, but it worked out. Uh, we're chugging along here. Uh, I think our party is looking pretty good. These boots of speed are really strong. I can't believe these are... Okay, I thought they were six, there were seven. That's really strong. Uh, I guess the dodge thing is supposed to be a pretty big downside. And it is. Like, I don't like dodge- like, this is like, this guy's best side, this guy's best side. What am I putting on the enchanter? Um, but that makes it really awkward to actually equip these things. I think the item- there used to be an item that just gave you plus one reroll. But this feels like a much better, like, more balanced version of that, I like that. But we, the roulette happens to be a strong synergy with it, I think. Because I don't like the idea of like having killing this character on turn one just because of a bad roll. Uh, which would probably happen a couple of times. So I'm really happy with how our party shaking up. Or shaping up. Although the roulette will probably die to the Tarantus, Tarantus this turn anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and call it here though. So we'll uh, jump into the Tarantus next session. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. See you guys there. Take it easy everyone. Goodbye.